If you like, I will summarize another tale for you, well and skillfully. Mind you, take it in, telling how gods and mortal men have come from the same starting point. The race of men that the immortals who dwell on Olympus made first of all was of gold. They were in the time of Kronos, when he was king in heaven, and they lived like gods, with carefree heart, remote from toil and misery. Wretched old age did not affect them either, but with hands and feet ever unchanged they enjoyed themselves in feasting, beyond all ills, and they died as if overcome by sleep. All good things were theirs, and the grain-giving soil bore its fruits of its own accord in unstinted plenty, while they at their leisure harvested their fields in contentment amid abundance. Since the earth covered up that race, they have been divine spirits by the great Zeus's design, good spirits on the face of the earth, watchers over mortal men, bestowers of wealth. Such is the kingly honor that they received. A second race after that, much inferior, the dwellers on Olympus made of silver. It resembled the golden one neither in body nor in disposition. For a hundred years, a boy would stay in the care of his mother, playing childishly at home, but after reaching adolescence and the appointed span of youthful manhood, they lived but a little time, and in suffering because of their witlessness. For they could not restrain themselves from crimes against each other, and they would not serve the immortals or, sac or sacrifice on the sacred altars of the blessed ones, as is laid down for men in their various homelands. They were put away by Zeus, son of Cronus, angry because they did not offer honor to the blessed gods who occupy Olympus. Since the earth covered up this race in its turn, they have been called the mortal blessed below, second in rank, but still they too have honor. Then Zeus the father made yet a third race of men, of bronze, not like the silver in anything. Out of ash trees he made them, a terrible and fierce race, occupied with the woeful works of Ares and with acts of violence, no eaters of corn, their stern hearts being of adamant, unshapen hulks, with great strength and indescribable arms growing from their shoulders above their stalwart bodies. They had bronze armor, bronze houses, and with bronze they labored, as dark iron was not available. They were laid low by their own hands, and they went to chill Hades' house of decay, leaving no names. Mighty though they were, dark death got them, and they left the bright sunlight. After the earth covered up this race too, Zeus, son of Kronos, made yet a fourth one upon the rich pastured earth, a more righteous and noble one, the godly race of the heroes who are called demigods, our predecessors on the boundless earth. And as for them, ugly war and fearful fighting destroyed them, some below uh, seven-gated Thebes, the Cadmian country, as they battled for Oedipus's flocks, and others it led in ships over the great abyss of the sea to Troy on account of lovely-haired Helen. There some of them were engulfed by the consummation of death, but to some Zeus the father, son of Cronos, granted a life and home apart from men, and settled them at the ends of the earth. These dwell with carefree heart in the isles of the blessed ones, besides deep-swirling Oceanus, Fortunate heroes, for whom the grain-giving soil bears its honey-sweet fruits thrice a year. Would that I were not then among the fifth men, but either dead earlier or born later. For now it is a race of iron, and they will never cease from toil by misery, or sorry, and toil and misery by day or night in constant distress, and the gods will give them harsh troubles. Nevertheless. Even they shall have good mixed with ill. Yet Zeus will destroy this race of men also when at birth they turn out gray at the temples. Nor will father be like children, nor children to father, nor guest to host, or comrade to comrade, nor will a brother be friendly as in former times. Soon they will cease to respect their aging parents and will rail at them with harsh words, the ruffians, in ignorance of the gods' punishment. Nor are they likely to repay their aging parents for their nurture. Fist law, men. One will sack another's town, and there will be no thanks for the man who abides by his oath, or for the righteous or worthy man, but instead they will honor the miscreant and the criminal. Law and decency will be in fists. The villain will do his better down by telling crooked tales, and will swear his oath upon it. Men in their misery will everywhere be dogged by the evil commotions of that envy who exults in misfortune with a face full of hate. Then, verily off to Olympus, from the wide-pathed earth, veiling their fair faces with white robes, decency and moral disapproval, will go to join the family of the immortals, abandoning mankind, whose grim woes 
will remain for mortal men, and there will be no help against evil.